Wow. That's nonsense, dude. Melees in Left 4 Dead 2 miss. Imagine trying to explain that you missed a point blank melee swing to your friends. Better yet, trying to express that it's the hitbox's fault, not yours. Yeah, I bet that'll translate real well. What is the cause behind this strange phenomenon? Well, if you seek answers, you have to cheat. Thanks to the console command, the veil is lifted, allowing us to see deeper into this coding madness. The strange hitboxes you see are melee hitboxes. Each melee in Left 4 Dead 2 has its own swing or arc. The problem is, is that these melee hitboxes are wonky, flimsy, and unreliable. Not only due to their design, but also by the ping and latency issues that players often deal with. Well, unless... You exploit them to your own advantage. I call this role playing the swing. Yeah, sounds funny, but that's the reality we're facing. Godlike players swing their melees while also moving their screens with the swing simultaneously. This warps the melee's hitboxes in your favor, popping zombies not just in front of you, but popping zombies in a 180 to 360 degrees around you. Crazy. Look at how ridiculous this looks. You have to remember that these are just random normal civilians you are playing as. Human beings like you and me. Yet they are able to kill 20 zombies with a single swing of an axe. What a superhuman feat of strength. <laughs> Damn. I guess we can roll with the fact that the zombies are, you know, rotten corpses. So bones, muscle, and organs are all fragile due to decay. I could prove this wrong though. The zombies in Left 4 Dead 2 jump over ledges, climb like damn cockroaches, and beat like Little Mac, dude. Yeah. Truly, have you ever tried jumping a fence or climbing up something even half as fast as a Left 4 Dead 2 zombie? I did, and I busted my ass. Look at this. It's kind of cool. Let's see if we could climb up this thing. Hope this doesn't count as trespassing. Is there any cameras? Doing this one arm. I'm not no Einstein, but I'm sure taking multiple bullets is some sort of sign of extreme durability. In addition, these zombies don't bite. They pull a blunt force trauma card. No scratching, only punches and kicks. All this implies that the infected are pretty much as close to being as tough or on par with an average human being, if not tougher. What is crazy is that this indicates that the survivors are physically stronger. They shove and melee multiple zombies without effort. Let's push this further by assuming the survivors are running on empty stomachs, wounds, and lack of sleep. I'd hate to be on the bad side of any survivor. Forget about the Doom Slayer, man. The coach is where it's at. I can't eat that shit! How you like Melees, in my eyes, are a high risk, high reward play style. You can look like a man slugging zombies left to right, or you can use the Magnum, which was my solution to my own melee problem. But on Realism Expert, the Magnum is essentially a pea shooter. Apparently, the game twists our arm, forcing us to use melees. Ain't no way out of this nonsense. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because of two things the witch and the tank. As soon as you start touching the higher difficulties, that's when the meta starts to show up. Hey, that's on the real bro i hate meta picks man i thought i killed you i bought ga let me tell you about tier list when getting into a fight would you pick a gun or a knife you know damn well i'm going with the gun it's straight up better well in left 4 dead 2 it's the opposite melees have the ability to take down tanks and witches effectively melees also have extremely good wave management and aoe insta kill potential the dual pistols are straight up fools and the magnum does not score up to the raw damage output that the melees have let's not forget about the two different melee types blunt and sharp the only difference being that the sharp melees are able to cut the smoker tongs while the blunts cannot. Essentially, that's the only difference between the two other than cosmetic. If you truly want a deeper explanation on how the melees work differently, you should really check out this guy's video. He knows the stuff better than I know the back of my hand. Hey everybody. <laughs> Not taking a melee on higher difficulties can completely eliminate the chances of survival against the waves of witches or tanks, or at least the efficiency in taking them out in a quick succession. There is no comparison. The Magnum and the Akimbos ain't got nothing on the melees. They don't offer the versatility nor the pure damage output. And let me tell you, with these custom maps, they don't play when it comes to spamming the witches and tanks. So next time you go all Akimbo, know that your ass is grass. 
They believe that guy comes in, comes out, and that's the way he goes. Just like our daddy. How do you like to use your melees, huh? Melee, then melee again? Or how about melee, melee, shove? None come close to the powerful melee swap melee. This display of pure skill is how you melee like the Flash. How the damn does this even work? Somehow, swapping between your weapons is faster than just swinging consecutively. I don't know, man. Let's just talk about the cosmetic of the melees. In reality, I thought it was just that cosmetic so when i thought of the axe and the machete i thought they would function the same but in reality they function different gameplay wise well more like in reliability remember what i said in the beginning of the video how melees have different hit regs well every single melee in left 4 dead 2 has a different hit reg that'll determine the reliability of the melee itself so let's use the fire axe for an example the fire axe is the most reliable melee in game does that mean it'll never miss no, it misses a plenty, but goddamn, it'll land more hits in the rake. What a hot mess of a melee. Literally, the rake never lands a hit due to its hit rate going upwards rather than horizontal. The knife is just a joke. It's the only melee that avoids your crosshair. The shovel is way too slow, and here, you know what, just avoid the last stand weapons, please. Just avoid them, okay? They're bad. All, all the last will stand up... I can't stand the last stand update weapons, dude. The baseball bat's first swing is amazing because of its hit reg. It goes horizontal. The following swings is where it misses. The same issue persists with the paddle bat. All of a sudden, the hit reg starts going diagonal instead of horizontal. Uh, the guitar, a strange case because it has the same animation as the fire axe, yet always somehow misses. The golf club is horrible. The crowbar is a sharp weapon even though it looks like a blunt weapon. The nightstick is a meme, and the machete swings at crackhead speeds. And the katana is only there for anime skins on the workshop. The frying pan is my personal favorite, but other than that, it's a terrible melee. The range is awful, and it has a slow swing, but it's extremely reliable. Unless you use the chainsaw. Ugh. Ass, dude. Damn, what a hot mess of a melee. I'd rather use my fist at this point. The chainsaw has a plethora of issues. The gas is a horrible concept. A melee having any sort of ammo is just cruel. That alone breaks the whole point of a melee. Not to mention, you use melees for the AoE clear. The chainsaw only kills one zombie at a time, albeit at a fast motion. Oftentimes, the zombies simply overwhelm you. Here's another fact I bet you didn't know. The chainsaw gives you resistances. Yeah, you take less damage when holding down mouse one with the chainsaw. The resistance only applies to commons. Not fire, not specials, and most definitely not tanks. Oftentimes, the chainsaw just can't hold up with the huge hordes of Left 4 Dead 2. In fact, nothing can really hold up in expert realism. I came to the realization, even after putting a thousand hours into Left 4 Dead 2, I still can't manage the insane amount of tanks, witches, crescendo events, and panic events that every single map creator spams. Here's my solution to melees. Just don't play on expert realism.